Hi, I'm Reinhard Ziegler. I'm co-founder of The Vessel, which is a nonprofit that helps send people on mission trips all around the world. And what's a little bit different about The Vessel is we don't actually put the trips together. We are, because we're about the person who's going. We work with organizations, churches, uh, NGOs, uh, mission organizations like Crew, Campus Crusade, and we help their people go on mission but we believe that the mission itself changes the life of the person going as much as it changes the life of the people that they'll encounter. The thing that's interesting about the vessel is we support people who are going on their first, second, or third mission trip. So we don't support professional Christians, uh, vocational pastors, or people who've just been going on mission for years because they have such a heart for it. What we're doing is we help support the person who's taking that big step of faith um, to raise support and in the process of doing that a lot of the applications we get people are really scared they don't know how they're going to raise three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars to go on a mission trip and so we want to come alongside that person and help them. Uh, Lori Lovelace, my wife, went on mission when she was in college and she spent the entire summer in Thailand and it was just a um, it, it was a life-changing event for her and it just gave her the impulse that she said one day, uh, I wonder how we can help people. You know, people have such a heart for missions and I think there's a need for it. And so we, we figured out how to establish a nonprofit with the help of some other folks. This project is really focused on the idea of reconciliation because last year in the political cycle we were in, the refugee crisis that, that we're seeing all over the world, especially the Middle East, um, and just uh, the whole Black Lives Matter movement. There were so many things going on that we really felt like reconciliation was a very important word to us. And on top of it, God really put 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 18 to 20 on my heart where Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he says, God has reconciled himself with you through the death and resurrection of his son. Now you get to be my ambassadors. You get to tell people that God wants you to come back to Him. And that passage, even though I'd read it, I don't know how many times, it just struck me. And I said, I think there's something that we can do here. And that's how we started this project of wanting to sit down and have conversations with people about reconciliation. We actually create an event of some kind where people can come to a specific location and we have a, we have a studio set up there, a temporary studio. And I sit and do interviews, and I've trained a couple of my friends to help me in this. And so we just sit down one-on-one -on -one for half an hour with somebody, have a comfortable conversation, and then we use this prayer called the Gardener of Peace, which started the whole thing. That um, it's a prayer that was attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. And a lot of people, especially in the Catholic tradition, are really familiar with it. And it begins with, you know, oh Master, may I be a gardener of your peace. And, um, and so it's this appeal to God, for God to make us into something, for Him to speak into our lives. And then the rest of the prayer is asking Him to help us reconcile with people in the world. Where there is injury, may I bring healing. Where there is discord, may I bring harmony or music. It's really interesting because some of the people are Christ followers, some aren't. Some people have no idea what they really believe. But in the mere act of reading the prayer out loud to us, it's interesting, something stirs. There's a beauty in the prayer. Um, and it's very emotional. People tell me all kinds of things as a stranger that you, you wouldn't believe and pour out their hearts and then we ask, is there a time in your life where you experienced reconciliation? And if there is, and we capture that story, or are there some things in your life that still need to be reconciled? And those are often really heartbreaking stories. You know, people who've passed away that they can't reconcile with anymore, relationships that are broken. Um, and some people talk about they haven't ever reconciled with God. They're angry at God about something, or they don't know who He is, and they don't know how to bring Him in, into their life. So when we're done with the interview, um, a lot of times I'll step off to the side with that person, and just, especially if they're not a believer, and I'll say, hey, would it be okay if I prayed for you? And there are very, very few people that turn you down. 
even if they don't know what prayer is or who you're praying to. It's a, it's a really special moment. It's a sacred moment. And um, we think that's part of the project. If we can bring healing, if we can be gardeners of peace right in that moment with somebody, we try to seize that moment as well. The, the idea of reconciliation actually runs through the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it wasn't until I got into the project and started digging into it going into the concordance, doing word searches in different, in different uh, translations of the Bible. You see that throughout, God is the prime mover. So the theology really is the gospel of reconciliation. That um, we can't on our own do anything. It's, it's that God gives us the grace. He's the first mover. He's the one that gave his son to us. And what we can do is respond. And when we respond in faith, that becomes, from our standpoint, the moment when you're saved, the moment when you've begun a relationship with Jesus. And you're then, God no longer remembers your sins. I mean, all those verses that say, I will remember your sin no more. I've removed your sin as far as the east is from the west. I've taken your sin and I've thrown it in the deepest ocean. All that stuff comes to us then at that moment when we've been reconciled. Then we've been... Um, We've been charged by Jesus himself, but also in the writings of Paul and Peter and others, that we're supposed to pass that on. So that, that's really our commission. And, the, uh, and I love um, in, the, uh, in the message, the translation is that we're to be ambassadors. An ambassador is somebody who represents somebody else. So we get to represent God in this and to invite others into a healed and whole relationship. God cares about beauty, right? <laughs> He is the master designer. And everything that, that he made, he even looks at, looked at it himself and said, wow, this is really good. Like, he was happy with the product. And uh, you know, we, we have that space in our heart that when we see a beautiful sunset or we see a rainbow or we see a butterfly or um, I, I mean anything where we stop and really look there's something, there's something inside of ourselves that's really attracted to that. And it's not the worldly beauty. It's really um, the pleasure of something that's well made. And so I think, uh, I think there is a very clear theology that um, art that is beautiful speaks of something that's greater, speaks of a perfection that doesn't necessarily easily exist in the world itself. I also think that there's room for art that's not beautiful to wake us up. Art that uh, is strident, that uh, has heavy and dark messages to show us the other, the other parts of life and the fact that we're living in a world that is under the rule of dark powers. And I think art can help show that to us as well. One of the things that I'd, I'd love for people to do is go visit our website, real easy URL, it's reconcile.world. And on it, read the stories of other people and just enjoy that and see what that stirs in your heart. The, uh, the Peace Prayer is on the website as well and some backstories. There are some great resources there that talk about other reconciliation projects, projects around the world. The Rwandan Reconciliation Project between victims and perpetrators is an amazing story and there, there are links to those things as well. So if you want to learn more about reconciliation, that's available. And we'd invite people to join us by sitting down, having conversations about reconciliation with friends, family, and even strangers, and to see if we can't pass this on.